everyone and welcome to the 4.30 p.m. to 5 p.m. session of the 2023 Open Simulator Community Conference. In this session, we are pleased to introduce the presentation using generative AI to create content for 3D immersive virtual worlds. Our speaker is Sally Sherry. Sally is a medical laboratory scientist specializing in STI laboratory methods training and consulting. Please check out the website at conference.opensimulator.org for speaker bios, details of this session, and the full schedule of events. The session is being live streamed and recorded, so if you have questions or comments during the session, you may send tweets to at OpenSimCC with the hashtag pound OSCC23. Welcome everyone. Let's begin the session. Greetings, greetings, greetings. Greetings, I'm Sally Cherry, AKA Sally S. Cherry. MLS ASCP. I, as uh, Leah said, I'm a medical laboratory scientist who specializes in STI laboratory methods training and consulting. I am also an unapologetic tech geek. As a 3D immersive virtual world evangelist and virtual content creator, I am passionate about creating content for my 3D virtual worlds for the purpose of sharing special interest information conducting laboratory training, promoting public health messages, raising public awareness about medical laboratory science, and fostering collaborative networks. I am. My physical world, which is some people call the RL or real life, and the virtual world projects and activities are inspired by my personal and professional vision. Real to virtual, virtual to real. I must note that I've started using the term physical world rather than real life because a cherished virtual world OG once noted that the virtual world is as real as the physical world. So after, so after 15 years as a virtual explorer, resident, creator, and network weaver, I totally respectfully agree. Now note, if you're unfamiliar with the term OG, it's short for original gangster. It's a general term used to praise someone who's an expert and who's exceptional, authentic, and old school. And this person is truly an authentic and an expert within our community. Well, anyway, I am delighted to share my most recent ex experience using generative artificial intelligence, AI, to conduct research on various aspects of the blues and jazz era and to create time period content For a um, for my uh, Open Sim Fest 2023 exhibit entitled "Jamming on uh, Jamming Reflections on the Jute Joint," and it should be Jute Joint, but it's actually "Jamming Reflections on the Jute Chain." I changed the joint to chain because of the work I'm doing on the blockchains. I'm still staying within the work uh, integrating AI art. NFTs, not so much anymore, and um, proof of stake blockchains. So this is where the term chain, why the term chain came in, came in there. While my virtual based AI experience started with my kindly hosted world, ShareNet Creative HQ, which reflects an integration, the integration of AI arc, NFTs and POS uh, blockchains in the 3D virtual world, my experience Experience has evolved beyond the creation of artistic images. As you see on the cover, this is a picture of my 
open op, uh, open film fest exhibit and i use generative arc tools gen i'm sorry genital ai tools to create it to create quite a bit of the content So for me, once again, the virtual world experience has directly reflected my vision, real to virtual, virtual to real. Bringing a physical world experience into the virtual world. That's the real to virtual part of it. Since 2008, I have focused on the integration of special interests from the physical world, such as my medical laboratory science or work, as well as tools and resources into my 3D virtual world community. As I embrace my vision and the action of a bi-directional integration has been a key factor in all of my work uh, centered around the virtual worlds. I, divine, I define integration as bringing together relevant content productive processes and innovative ideals to accomplish a task. Hence, real to virtual, virtual to real. Sharing physical world content in a three in 3D virtual worlds. That's the real to virtual. Maintaining 3D virtual connections in the physical world. That's the virtual to real. My mission has continued for, throughout all of my work. And for me, the tasks indicated in the integration is accomplishing my mission, which is to provide capacity building, public awareness, and content through the integration of digital media, such as social media, websites, photographs, videos and etc and 3d virtual worlds one of the chosen paths or other words my objectives is to fulfill my mission is to provide a bi-directional linkage to the special interests information tools and resources between my physical world and my virtual world communities while it's a physical pro it was a physical process that brought me into the 3d virtual world community the ongoing adventure of creating content and discovering innovative ideas has keeps me here in our uh, amazing 3D virtual world community. As it is widely known, 3D virtual worlds hold significant importance due to their ability to provide interactive, engaging, and often and realistic experiences from entertainment, education, and professional training as, and research. Their ability to stimulate realistic experiences and foster co um, collaborations, creativity, and exp explorations makes them a valuable te technology in numerous ways. go back one. So needless to say, I'm sure you find one area on that on the chart that you're involved in, one application that you're involved in. If there's some application that you see there that your your project is involving, feel free to note it in the in the chat. Again, the, we know how valuable uh, virtual worlds are. And it's our, hopefully our mission, and we keep it going to let other people explore our world and come in and see the value of our world. But I am not going to list, I'm just not going to name them out. They have the list there. And, but I think I covered pretty much every, a lot of the uh, applications that's already in existence. Now, I must note 
that the list I can share there, you see the notation, and I always do full disclosure. At the bottom of the chart, I have noted this chart was created with the assistance of CHAP GPT and GPT-4. And that's one thing I hope and feel that you go on if you're using generative AI. It should be disclosed uh, when you're doing your presentations. That's, that's my opinion. And that's what I try to do. It's great. Okay, I see training to stimulate simulation, communication. So we all are that important people here because we're doing important work in the 3D virtual worlds. So let's get into the the nuts and bolts of the of the of generative AI. Now, since 2008, my greatest passion as a virtual world resident and builder has been and is still researching and curating content as well as sharing that special content within the physical world and my 3D virtual world. Now, one of the things that I find that to be very important in the physical world as well as the virtual world is to have a strong toolbox. In the virtual world, I refer to it as my virtual world toolbox. So this passion, my passion fuels my ongoing search for tools for the tools box. And these tools enhance the user and the creator experience of the 3D virtual worlds. So in order to find a place in my toolbox, I look for an assortment of tools to assist in the task of enhancing the understanding of a particular process, elevating its use through engagement, educating others about its use. That's one of the things I'm doing today. Basic information sharing. That's, that's it right there. That's my passion. That's my heart. And of course, as the scientist in me has been doing, evaluating the results. I like to see how it's going to benefit, how it's going to impact the task at hand. And this is how I'd, I try to achieve that in, the, in my evaluations. After using generative artificial intelligence AI to enhance and create content for my Open Sims Fest 2023 exhibit entitled Jamming Reflections on the Juke Chain, it has been included, that's genitive AI tools has been included in my virtual world toolbox. It is my hope that sharing the sharing of my genit genitive AI experience may encourage the use or a closer look at genitive artificial intelligence as a research or creative tool. I call it my assistance. It doesn't it goes without saying that creating compelling and realistic content for 3D virtual worlds is essential for providing an engaging user experience. As it has been reported, generative AI has become a powerful tool for creating diverse and high quality content for 3D virtual worlds. So you ask, Okay, we hear all this talk about the about the uh, genit genitive arc, genitive artificial. So what is it? Basic. I get, if I say simple, but it's simply, it's a subgroup, a subset rather, of artificial intelligence, and it's under the category of machine learn, and it's focused on developing algorithms and models to generate new content. That's it. Gen of, and now I'll refer to it as Gen AI because it's genitive artificial intelligence referred to as Gen AI or genitive AI. I like Gen AI. It learns the underlying patterns and structures of the provided training data and then generate new content results. Now, one of the things some people may say, well, well, how is it different from the other AI technologies we're having here? Well, take a note, 
generative AI is a little different from our standard technologies. And I think I have that here. And I noted here on the chart wherein our standard technologies, let me go back one. I want to make sure I get this into the chat so you will have it. And I'm, if it's that's a repeat, forgive me. With the traditional AI, their their focus their focus is on producing a result, an output. So they receive their focus is on receiving a preset input to produce an predetermined output and this output is based on predetermined rules and algorithms and it's widely used throughout industry science and government and some of the applications you're familiar with voice assistance your good old alexa your good old google assistance and very search web search engines such as Google search and strategy games, where on the other hand, generative AI focus on the creation of new content, such as images, videos, audio, and 3D virtual worlds. Now take a note, your typical AI's technologies, they don't, they're not creating here. Your generative AI are your creators. So you ask, as in the physical world, the potential use of generative AI are increasing within 3D emerging virtual worlds and the growing numbers of the grow the growing number of physical world and virtual based creators, educators and artists are using generative AI to create and share artistic educational, cultural and historical content for the purpose of storytelling, educating, entertaining, gaming, training and amplifying voices from unknown communities, unseen communities, seen communities, and known communities. But I call it this a, it's an awesome amplifier because you can definitely use it to get your message out and to build a content help get that message out. And as I noted on the chart, my nice little illustration there, it shows some of the applications of, the, of uh, G, uh, Gen AI. As you see there, I think that someone asked, well, can, you, can it write strip? Can it do this? Can it do that? I say it's yours. It can serve as a nice assistance. Gen AI is used in diverse applications across industries, entertainment, healthcare, and manufacturing, as well as it, con it continues to drive innovation and content creation, simulation, and creativity. With the, then the 3D virtual world, Gen AI may be employed, which I do, to enhance the process of creating 3D virtual content. It may serve as, and I call, I refer to it as this, it may serve as your research assistant or even your creative assistant while sharing special interest information, storytelling, and visualizing, visualizing an idea or data, writing script, 
generating virtual environments and designing custom training data. Yes, you can train your your um, your AI. Thank now, you, in, Sally. I am so sorry to cut in. Did you have a final slide you wanted to share with the audience? We're we're out of time and need to wrap, but we want to make sure that they can reach out to you for more information on this topic. Yes, be sure to come by my booth and what I'm doing when I come by the booth and what we can do, we can put up some of the slides, the rest of the slides on the booth. So you'll see how we use it in our 3D um, Open STEM Fest exhibit. Wonderful, and thank you, Sally, for an informative and interesting presentation. As a reminder to our audience, you will want to check out the conference.openseminar.org website, not only for the schedule, but also for more information on this talk and the next talk, which is Making Classic Clothing in Open Simulator Worlds at 5 o'clock. Also, we encourage you to visit the OSCC 23 Poster Expo in the OSCC Expo Zone 3 region, where Sally's booth is and the booths from our other speakers. Also check out the sponsor and crowdfunder booths located throughout all of the OSCC Expo regions. Thank you, Sally, and thank you to our audience.